Hey, hey, everybody, it's Victor from PopCon. Thanks for joining us for this special presentation. April is National Deaf History Month, among other things, and it helps us to remember to commemorate the achievements of people who are hearing impaired. Now, it is a month, but it really runs from March 13th through April 15th due to three very key factors in deaf education. The first being that on April 15th, the first public school for deaf education opened in America in 1817. Now, I'll let you know the two others in just a moment, but PopCon wants to celebrate this, uh, this month and uh, by showing us two fictional characters or highlighting these fictional characters from the past who really had a positive impact and awesome representation in this field. Now we also recognize that we have a long way to go for inclusion in the media uh, that doesn't seem forced. But these two characters I've selected really um, they show that they're not one trick ponies and that their hearing loss isn't the only motivation or isn't the only character uh, quality or trait that moves the narrative. I hope you enjoy. Let's begin with the creation of Peo. Do you remember them? Yeah, the little blue forest creatures that debuted in a Belgium comic in 1958 and finally ruled Saturday morning cartoons from 1981 to 1989. The Smurfs, of course. In the Smurfs' third season, a character who was both deaf and mute was introduced as a friend of Papa Smurfs. Her name was Lacanya, and she was a wood elf. In a true introductory storytelling of such a character, her uniqueness is the primary story of the whole episode. And although it is first to help poet Smurf, by the end she gives the gift of sign language to all of our little blue friends who are delighted to learn it. Now that could have simply been the end of such a character, as is often the case with very special episodes of anything, but luckily her character had more to offer and was in a total of five very different adventures, and although they all included the use of sign language, obviously, the complete story isn't reliant completely on Laconia's trait of being deaf, but other ways she can provide help and assistance simply based on her other abilities. Finally, and most surprisingly, she doesn't just disappear. But in an effort to show a well-rounded character, instead of just writing her off after her purpose was done uh, in the storytelling narrative, she's actually proposed to by her friend Woody. No, not that Woody. And definitely not that Woody. But he is a wood elf. And eventually the two are even married. Even that was not her final appearance. Which just goes to show you that efforts were present even back then to portray positive representation of others around us who might be very different than ourselves. Hello again. If you're new to PopCon and you're really enjoying this content, please do me a favor and like and subscribe. And if you're going that far, you might as well just click that alert button. Hell, go all the way and share and comment. And I'd really appreciate it. It'd be really helpful to our channel. And uh, let's on with the show. I promised you those other turning points. Well, the second one I wanted to bring up was on April 8, 1888. Gallaudet University, which I'm sure I have mispronounced, but Gallaudet University, the first university dedicated to the advanced education of the deaf and hard of hearing, was founded. Now this second character had less screen time, but her inclusion is not only impactful because she is a lovely character who is also deaf, but because of the reason she exists at all. The Little Mermaid debuted to rave reviews in 1989 and started the Disney animated film Renaissance. This was the first full-length animated Disney feature to spin off their own cartoon series. In the second season, a teenage character named Gabriella, who is definitely represented as a deaf character, is sent and introduced to diversify the world that Ariel lives in. Again, the first episode is introductory and demonstrates the power and exploration of communication with the use of sign language and teaches those differences are what make us special. Now I have to stop here and give a lot of credit where credit is due. Um, and I need to point out the beautiful representation of ASL or American Sign Language in animation. To watch the character sign is to watch very thoughtful animators whose desire to do right by her show through. And it shows through in every frame. This is a feat for 12 frame a second TV cartoon animation. And I do get really sucked into watching just how well they put the signing down in ink. Now, with why she is even a character in the show. A little girl diagnosed with cancer had recently passed away. And in a Los Angeles Times article, her parents described how their daughter had become an avid fan of the 1989 animated film, and that their little girl also would watch that movie upwards of four times a day throughout her treatment for cancer until the time of her death in 1992. That little girl's name was Gabrielle. Moved by the article, the animators introduced this character, gave her the same ethnicity, and added this special trait that not only taught our strong-willed little redhead mermaid, but also gave potential for further adventures. I am sure if the series had continued, Gabriella would have remained a constant character and companion in more than the two episodes she was in. 
She may have had few appearances, but her impact did not end there. She actually lives on in both fan fiction and fan art that is still populates the internet today. These characters were portrayed with respect and dignity long before it became the norm to do so. But here we are still trying to move the needle. This was in no means a full list of characters like this, and I simply hand-selected these two as part of my showcase. As we all work for inclusion, we cannot overlook the successes of our past. You express yourself beautifully, Gabriella, with sign language. That either we ourselves experienced or those of our children. And remember that any demonstration of valuing diversity and visible representation should continue. It's been there before, and it's welcomed by those who appreciate what is often considered to be a disposable art form, animation. Those strong connections can still be felt today. I can't pretend to know what it is that has slowed the forward momentum of these efforts and successes, but let these images spark our renewed commitment to continue the tradition of inclusion. And that third key moment that makes these 30 days National Deaf History Month? It happened 100 years after Gallaudet University opened. On March 13, 1988, they hired their first deaf president. I bet all of us know someone affected by hearing loss. And if any of those people saw the little girl at the beginning of the fourth Toy Story film, the little girl in Bonnie's class, who simply was laughing and living and existing and smiling like any other kid in the class and wearing a cochlear implant, probably agree that positive representation matters no matter what. Well, thanks for joining us here at PopCon and the special presentation, and stay tuned for other full shows and other topics right here on the channel. Until next time.